think we have to be um, so critical about what happening at the moment in cinema uh, because uh, there was a period that cinema was limited and dominated by the state uh, it happens yet up to date but at the same time I think it has shifted we have find, found many ways to I mean go beyond the state in the age of postmodern so I think the next challenge is festivals I think I think we have to be self-critical because there are many festival formulas as example last time also I with my all respects I suggested uh, in that session the title peace uh, I don't think cinema have do anything with peace honestly I think it's very I mean uh, if you are coming very becoming very serious about cinema and the cinema philosophy this is so ideological this title is very much ideological so with all the respects I kindly request to <laughs> think uh, think twice about that title the problem is mainstream cinema is always dealing with racism and many uh, ideological uh, components in a very smooth way in a very smooth way I must say uh, we don't have to deal with directly political politics as artist I guess with Donald Trump or Xi Jinping or Modi or anybody I know no but I think when you as I emphasize the politics of aesthetics is very different I think uh, as example if you take Afghanistan uh, when you go through the history now contemporary by mass media and everything Afghanistan is marginalized as uh, some extreme country I mean they have labeled it as that but if you t who did this actually did Mullah Omar did it I don't think so who created Mullah Omar with the I mean the uh, clash of I mean uh, the Cold War clash of Russia and America for uh, oil and there are many complications I think cinema has cinema having a great responsibility of exposing the alternative always not the mainstream not the mainstream I'm excited to to meet uh, this country and uh, see with my eyes uh, what uh, difference I can feel between my place Spain but at the same time the common things that we have and why th that's why we are here is the film and is the topic of the piece about the contemporary cinema and how uh, the Asian cinema arrived to Spain I would like to talk from my point of view like uh, I'm a filmmaker too uh, uh, I'm a filmmaker but also I'm a programmer and director of a short film festival a ecological film festival in Spain that we make every summer and during these six years uh, I realized how it's growing every year the submissions from films from Asia and always in our, our program we have a very good uh, films with the topic of ecology uh, um, natural uh, animals uh, topic around the world of uh, keeping peace with the world just, just, uh, just not only between humans and the respect also with the nature that we are living. My film uh, became from this kind of meetings in a film festival. Uh, in two festivals, uh, we have the, a big coincidence with one filmmaker from Russia, and she is Olga, she, uh, Olga Polyektova. She used to make animation. I'm a filmmaker that uh, used to work with actors. I make fi uh, fiction, and we decided to try to find a common point to work together like uh, filmmakers in a co-directed film so uh, me drawing my draws are horrible so we throw away the idea to make a, a, a classic animation film like she used to do so we make animation by stop motion because I like photography and we could uh, mix our technical so my film Chiripajas that you will see tomorrow is uh, made uh, thanks at this uh, point of meeting between filmmakers in a film festival. I have the feeling that uh, those last uh, 50 years and even more uh, all around the world we are in some way brainwashed and uh, 
what uh, the politics wants, they are doing everything to make us believe that they are uh, right and not wrong. Uh, so the other thing is the relationship between politics and arts and uh, film in particular. Uh, so uh, if you see the history of uh, film history from all over the world, how uh, many films are produced under the uh, influence of politics uh, directly or by economics. And uh, the other thing why we are doing this job is to try to make the other thing, to try to influence the politics and the other people to think in the other way. Because one of the, one of the uh, purposes of uh, uh, dealing with art is just to change the society in a better way and not in the worst way. And uh, to make a conclusion, just a few days before coming to Karachi, I had a meeting with my students. Uh, we have the International Film School, Sarajevo Film Academy, where I am proud to say I, we have students coming from 32 different countries uh, from all five continents. And uh, we were talking about what are going to be their films for the end of the year or thesis film for the end of studies. And all 32 of them, all 32 of them, both bachelors and masters and PhD, choose the theme that has to do in one way or another the peace and the crisis in the world. They are not interested anymore in the stories, uh, two of them are uh, in love and mother is against. They don't want that kind of story. They want the stories where they can be involved and tell their opinion about why hate, why war, why killing, why, 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 why. And to try to give the answers by peace, let's make something constructive, don't be destructive. Unfortunately, the 21st century started by destructions. I think, uh, I really thanks to, uh, like, um, um, I live in Indonesia now, um, uh, with the, with the um, uh, um, com comfortable with the, with, the, with the situation of the cinema in my cinema in Indonesia. Um, uh, I live, uh, I'm making a film from 2000, in, in 2000, uh, but I want to tell you, uh, uh, I remember in 1990 in my country, uh, I think 1990 until 1998, uh, we, every regime, we have, uh, we will be affect to the theme of the film will be affect to the filmmaker to making film, how they're making film, and how they tell their story. In my home country, uh, um, my government, uh, they, support, they support me, they support uh, Indonesian filmmaker, but yeah, still, still, still grow, and there's any, a little bit uh, something wrong, uh, but uh, I really, I really uh, thank for the, my government. I want to talk about cinema of Afghanistan uh, since from after the regime of Taliban. What happened in Afghanistan before of that? Bef uh, re during the Taliban, this all cinema was closed and uh, the filmmakers was not uh, in Afghanistan be safe and the all archive of everything in Afghanistan burned and the uh, and Orship also after the regime of Taliban's the new generation of filmmakers is starting the making of films uh, and now we are uh, the new generation and uh, filmmakers trying to starting the filmmaking but the specialists we don't safe and don't, we don't have a peace in Afghanistan. Everybody's know it to the news, everything's 
always bomb blasting on something's happening in Afghanistan. From 2001 to up to now, 2019, the, uh, in Afghanistan cinemas, the filmmakers, all people it's, I'm thinking, they will left Afghanistan. And they're going to Europe, US, just no one is in Afghanistan. But we were trying to make a film, to make the film a good film. We don't have an academy of films. Just one academy, it's called Kabul University. There, the new generation is starting the studying in, in here. And I also graduated from there, but never to uh, see some uh, big project or the film academy of filmmakers who come to Afghanistan for the uh, workshops or something like. We have uh, like a, a seven or five film festival in Afghanistan. It's an international film festival. But, uh, ne uh, but the foreign peoples or filmmakers, when coming in Afghanistan, they are so scaring. And it's so security was, everything is well with them. But they are not feel so uh, safe. But no one is, uh, we have also Masood was coming from Iran and making his film in Afghanistan. Like, he was like two mountain there. But many things happening with him, so with us. But uh, so, and uh, uh, when the Taliban took power in 1960s, cinemas were attacked and many films were, were born the Taliban. And the viewing of the televisions and filming cinemas were closed, either became shops or restaurants, everything was filtered into the state of the, the pier. So, when the end is, and I want you to tell you the end, let's come in peace and make for peace, film peace. It's the, APPF is the window of uh, the love and humanity, peace, everything. In terms of peace, I, I, you know, I think the festival itself uh, is, is serving that uh, by inviting all these international uh, delegates. Um, uh, in terms of film, we're so lucky that we have NetPAC. We have NetPAC here and we have Busan Asia Film School. They support a lot of the Asian filmmakers. So if you're a new filmmaker, I would look for them because uh, they're very supportive for Asian filmmakers, especially the young filmmakers. Uh, you have a lot of good delegates coming here uh, that's very supportive of young filmmakers. So if you're in that category, I would uh, talk to them, network with them, uh, especially the festival directors as well. Um, uh, I just want to share to you how, what's happening in the Philippines. Um, Asia, you know, I've, I've Part of my job is going around the world, just visiting film markets, trying to understand how the film industry works, how do we make money out of all these things. And it's actually uh, very enlightening to know that Asia is one of the regions that Hollywood is looking at, that the other um, Western countries are focusing on, uh, because we have the market here. It might address some of your issues regarding short films and you know, audience in festivals and stuff like that. Um, but um, there's a lot of things we have to do in Asia, uh, especially in terms of production and how to make good films. Uh, you have to know your audience. It's not just about you making your film. It's okay to make those personal films because there is going to be an audience for it. If there's no audience for it, that's fine because it's a personal film. It's something you really want to do. So that's fine. And that's probably going to go to festivals and it's going to be appreciated and get the necessary uh, you know, um, audience for it. But it's very selective because it's something you really want to do. But I just want to say about best practices, after learning a lot of things about film markets, 
you really need to know your audience. Who is going to watch your film? And that's very important. Because if, no, if you don't know, then why are you making it? If it's really for festivals, then make your festival films. If you really want to earn money, then really think about who is going to watch it. And the next step is, where are you going to show it? With the new technology, we have cell phones. You can actually watch films on cell phones. You can actually watch it on iPads. You can watch it on TV, on streaming services like Netflix, uh, VODs, Voice On Demand, um, uh, a lot of new services. There's actually a, a company called Brightcove that actually you can customize your own Netflix if you want to create your own Netflix. So there's a new technology with all that. So there is a career right now in the Philippines to make this really short or micro short films, uh, short stories, two minutes, three minutes, uh, and companies are actually buying it, and you know, uh, and it's uh, becoming a lucrative career for for advertising. Um, so there is that trend that's happening. And it's not just, I think, in the Philippines. It's actually uh, uh, going beyond the Philippines. Or it's actually a, it's a modern thing now. Um, but you know, filmmakers, especially the youth and the millennials and all that, uh, you have a voice and you have a great future because there is this new technology. There is this new platform that you can show your films. You don't have to spend hundred millions of dollars to tell your stories, but that's the thing, you know, who's going to watch it and why are you making it and where are you going to show it? A few things uh, I would like to add, uh, right starting from, as to help you how the local filmmakers are feeling and what we are feeling in, in terms of being in mainstream cinema and the alternate cinema. Uh, in 1978, there were 1400 cinemas in Pakistan then General Ziaul Haq came into power and when he left in 1988, in 10 years, the cinemas were actually only 14 cinemas left in the country. So we, uh, from th that point on, had a very uphill task to revive the cinema. All the uh, film materials that was in the golden era were lost almost in 1960s we used to make very good films in 1950s we used to make very good films we had the liberty to choose from a lot of uh, uh, genres and a lot of stories coming back to the 10 years that we are going through from right from 2010 till 2018 uh, as far as the technology has uh, invaded uh, the country uh, the we are uh, as equipped as the rest of the world is. You can find any equipment lying around here any, anywhere. But the problem is that for the past three or four decades, we have gone a little confused in how to say the story. It's not uh, the technological side that we are uh, challenging with, it's the narrative that we are challenging with. Uh, what my dear friend has said just now, I think it can be a, a topic of its own, understanding the audience and how to make a successful film and making money out of it. But as far as the young lot is concerned and the uh, uh, people are concerned who are in the industry and making few bucks out of it, we also feel a lot of pressure in choosing the subject. For instance, if I want to make a film right now, I can go and make a film on rom-com and probably get the funding as well and the film will hit the cinema. But whether I want to make that film, film making is all about making bridges, not making wa walls. I think uh, this time in which the times that we are living in has a huge responsibility on our shoulders as filmmakers and as storytellers that we have to show the human condition we are living in. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions around between the cultures and between the countries and believe me if you go on the other side you will find them as much like you as you are and all the people and all the cultures are with their own textures, they do have their own textures 
but the basic emotions and the language of emotions is the same and we have so much to contribute and so much to learn from each other and appreciate from each other uh, look at all the great filmmakers uh, George Lucas he was told that Star Wars will never work but it did work uh, uh, look at uh, D.W. Griffith and he was said that you can't do it and he did it so all of this uh, comes down to one key element and that is freedom and able to tell the stories that you want to uh, tell.